Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone, and welcome to my channel. Today we have a case study. This is a 99 F250 with a 7.3 power stroke. So this thing came in and the customer states that uh, would only would only run on alternative fuel and will not idle. So it gets towed in, obviously it doesn't start. Scan it for codes, it's got a P1212 ICP not as expected, a P1211 ICP above or below, uh, and it had a P1280 for ICP circuit out of range low, and a PO340 cam sensor circuit fault. So. The ICP out of range, uh, I may have disconnected the, the ICP sensor with the key on, and so I probably induced that code. However, I start this procedure the same way. I try to start it, and I look at the high-pressure oil. And in this case, I'm going to show you it will not build 500 pounds to start. So let's get into that. And let me show you what this is going to look like, and then we'll get on to the next step. Okay, so what I like to do is when I have circuit fault codes, I want to see how how um, how the circuit is failing. So is it failing all the time? So what I like to do is once I've documented the codes, like turn the key off, and then I go and I scan for codes. And that way I know if a circuit code pops, then I need to be looking at the wiring or if there's just a sensor that's dead uh, because a bad sensor will also cause a circuit malfunction if the circuit is out if the sensor is out of range okay so there we go we have no codes and no pending codes so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into data now this thing seven threes are funny Sometimes you got to turn the key on, turn it off, turn it back on. It'll have no communication. One more thing about a 7.3 is if you're scanning a 7.3, if you're in and you're trying to, and you go to, if you have a 7.3 and it's running, and then you go to check codes while it's running, it'll stall. It's weird. They just do that. The first time that ever happened, I, I thought something was wrong. I was all worried. Okay, so ICP is reading 0.2, so that's good. It's not reading zero. All right. So now we're going to be looking at the ICP pressure and the pressure regulator. All right, so I've got a battery charger on this already, and I've already done a, a, a quick visual under the hood uh, to make sure that the IPR net hasn't fallen off and to make sure that the ICP is not full of oil. So I'll show you those when I get out. Uh, but the IPR connector is covered in oil. I haven't disconnected it yet. Because once you disconnect things, then you make problems that weren't there. So if that wasn't a problem, it can become a problem. All right, so now we're going to crank it. I've got a battery charger on it. And we're going to crank it and see what the ICP gets to. Okay, so as you can see, we built about 265. So I like putting it on, on graph mode because see right here, it was very difficult to read sometimes what the actual pressure got to. And so in graph mode, you can see right here, it reached 265.9. And then our IPR is maxed out at 65%. So we know that the computer is trying to max out the high pressure pump. It's not maxing out. The oil pressure is not maxing out. It's not starting. And so now we got to go and do some troubleshooting. But before we do that, I let it crank a little bit longer than normal because I wanted to see if any codes set. Well, what I'm looking for mostly is I'm looking for the ICP circuit code, and I'm also looking for uh, the cam position sensor code. So unfortunately, on a 7.3... Uh, six liters too. As long as your cam sensor wiring is okay, if you get a cam sensor code, uh, you need to put a cam sensor in it. Cam sensors can cause all kinds of drivability problems. Um, 
in these things. Okay, so there we go. All right, so we're not building enough high pressure oil and it set a code for that. So now we're gonna go do a visual under the hood, check the oil and check some other things and uh, let's go see what that looks like. Okay, so here's my quick visual that we're gonna do. Uh, anytime you have an issue like this, the first thing that you wanna do is you want to, let's see if we can see with my headlamp on, all right. So you wanna pop your ICP, this is your ICP sensor right here. It's the same sensor as a six liter. And you just wanna make sure there's no oil. You can look down in the sensor, but obviously if you have oil, it'll be on the connector. So that's been done. Uh, let's see. Uh, the next thing that we wanna do is you want to look down there. So your IPR valve is right there. That, that, that shiny nut that's down there. All right, anyways, it's right there next to the, to the bluish wire. Um, the nut is on. Uh, what you're looking for is it to be off in the valley. Sometimes that nut will fall off. But what I do notice is, and it's gonna be hard to see, that connector right there, it's not focusing. I can't get it to focus. Uh, the, 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 the wiring is covered in oil. So I'm gonna disconnect that connector and see what it looks like uh, inside the connector. Cause I got, I got oil coming out of the connector. All right, let me check that. The other thing we're gonna do is check the oil. I've already done that. This thing is about two quarts low, so I'm gonna to top that off as well. All right, let me check this connect. Okay, so here's your IPR right here. You're gonna have two wires. One of them, you disconnect it. One of them, you check it to have power with the key on, engine off. I've already done that. Uh, I couldn't really show you, it's kind of hard. Anyways, it had power. Uh, so I plugged it back in, and now we're gonna back probe the other wire, and we're gonna crank it over. And if the PCM is grounding the IPR to 65%, then this voltage will drop less than five volts. So that showed right there that the IPR is actually really getting grounded and trying to close at 65%. So what we're gonna do on this one is we're gonna, we're gonna replace the IPR uh, because from there, if it's not the IPR, then there is a leak in the high pressure oil system or a bad high pressure pump. So we're gonna put an IPR in this thing and, uh, and then recheck it. Okay, so as I showed you, it will not build oil pressure and it will not start. No need to induce a fuel to it or anything like that because at this point, we know that this thing will not start without 500 pounds of high pressure oil. Uh, now later we can, once we build the 500 pounds, then we can determine if we have a fuel pump that's working, things like that. However, uh, with these two codes, a P121 and a P1211, it's always been an IPR. I put an IPR in these things and it fixes it. I've had no problems in the past. So we're gonna put an IPR in this. Let me show you what that looks like after we put this valve in. All right, so this is what the IPR looks like. You got the nut on the back that secures the solenoid. Once this gets approved, I'll, uh, I'll show you the torque specs of everything. Uh, you especially want to torque this nut right here because if you don't torque it enough properly, it'll fall off. And then what happens is this right here. And the solenoid does this and it'll work and it won't work. And the problem will be the fact that your IPR is not really connected properly. So this nut is really, really important. And then this goes on there. But I wanted to show you what that looked like because I had made a mention of checking for the nut in the valley. So let me get this sold and uh, I'll show you how to replace this IPR. All right, here we go, got the job approved. Okay, so here is the part number for the IPR. All right, if you look this up, it's actually called a fuel pressure regulator, uh, but it's not really, it's an injection pressure regulator solenoid. Uh, but when you're looking up parts, it's a fuel pressure regulator. All right, so here's what we got here. So it's gonna come like this, hang on. Let me put it back together to show you. Flipped around. All right, so it's gonna come like this with the nut here. All right, so this nut here is 19 uh, millimeters and you're gonna torque this to 53 inch pounds. 
So what you're gonna do is you're gonna, to, to, to remove the old one, you're gonna take this nut off. You're gonna slide this piece off here. Then you're gonna slide the solenoid off. Disconnect your connector, slide the solenoid off. And now you're gonna take this off. Now this is a, a inch and an eighth right there. So that's gonna be 35 foot pounds. All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you put a bunch of rags underneath this uh, when you take it out, because it's gonna leak a whole bunch of oil in the valley. All right, and if you get a Motocraft one, all your O-rings will come lubed up. It comes with, uh, with a, a, rubber, a rubber sleeve on it to keep everything together and not damaged. So that's that. All right, now if you need to replace this, the, the connector, this is the Dorman part number. Now, sometimes the Motocraft one's not available in time. The key is that you wanna make sure you have the metal latch. So there's another aftermarket brand that instead of the latch, it has a plastic tab on each side. You don't want that one because those little tabs break off and this metal one here, it stays on. You don't have to worry about this coming off. So make sure if you got oil in there, you replace your connector and make sure you solder it. It'll come with butt connectors, but don't butt connect it. Solder it. I'm gonna solder mine and got the IPR. And then if, if you have to do a cam sensor, this is the Motocraft part number for the cam sensor. It's very important that you put a Motocraft cam sensor in, not aftermarket. This will cause you all kinds of problems. Drivability problems, no start problems, you name it. The list is a mile long of the things that can happen from a bad cam sensor. That's why you just replace it if you think there's an issue. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this IPR out of here and get this pigtail made. And there's the part numbers again. Again, this is 19 millimeter and it is 53 inch pounds. And this is 35 foot pounds and is an inch and an eighth. All right, let me get this stuff in and then we'll go to the scanner when we try to start this. Okay, so one of the things that I talked about yesterday was that this harness was all covered in oil and I wasn't really sure why. It lays up against the high pressure oil line but this high pressure oil line has 500 to thousands of pounds of oil pressure. So if that line was leaking, you would have a spray. So what I think is going on with this harness here, I've had a couple other ones do this, is I think that a slight amount of oil is seeping out of the cack boot here and leaking down to the harness and running down. So pretty sure that's what's going on there. All right, let me get this harness disconnected and uh, let's get these repairs done. All right, here we go. Been having trouble getting the batteries charged up. I think I got them good enough. Let's see what happens here. All right, so we're building 500 pounds, but sometimes there's air, so we got to get the air out. Hard part with these uh, high pressure oil systems is you can't panic because when you panic that's when it's about to start and then you go look at something else we know it wasn't building 500 pounds before and now it is so here we go and the batteries are starting to pull down all right, let me go get the charger going here and uh, try this again. All right, here we go. It definitely smells like fuel in the shop, so I know we have fuel. So we just got to get these injectors to fire. All right, all right, here we go. We're trying a different charger to see if uh, maybe this is just a charger. All right, here we go. So close. All right, here we go. Wait to start light just went out. And we fired. And now I got to get it out of the shop. This thing is going to stink. All right, there we go. It cut off on me. I'm trying to get this thing to stabilize so I can get the charger off of it. There we go. Now we're at idle. And we got 760 pounds of high pressure oil. And the IPR is at 20%. All right. Now we just got to get this thing running. 
or let it run, drive it, make sure it's all bled before the customer picks it up. Okay, so we put the IPR in there and it started and it ran for about 20 minutes without putting my foot on the throttle and then it stalled and it wouldn't restart and it wouldn't build over 129 pounds of high pressure oil. So at this point, I reached out, we, we were in a pinch, it was the end of the week, it was a holiday coming up and you know, do we have a pump that's failing or do we have a high pressure oil leak? We suspected a pump that was leaking. I don't have a gauge to measure, you know, 500 pounds of uh, high pressure oil because I don't ever really measure that. I always just trust the engine. And uh, in this case, we have a, a vehicle that's just dying after it's been running. So we're gonna put a high pressure oil pump in this thing and then let's see what that one does. Okay, so if you ever have these codes and you put an IPR in there and it runs, and, and then it stalls or it doesn't run afterwards. Uh, it's easy to just pull the valve covers and inspect. Uh, don't disconnect the connectors to the valve cover gaskets. Just pull the valve covers off and use a, 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 a remote starter and just go right off the solenoid and crank it over. And you're gonna look at all the injectors and you're gonna look at all the injector uh, bores and see if you see any oil. So we did this, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Let's check that out. All right, go ahead and crank it. Oh, I don't have a good angle, hang on. There it is. All right, try it. Right. Perfect, thank you. I'm good. Okay, so now this thing is more acting more like a six liter when a six liter fails. I've never seen this kind of failure in a 7.3, but this is how six liters fail as well. Uh, you can have multiple high pressure oil leaks and in this case we had an injector that the top two o-rings had blown out and were completely broken so as i showed you when we were cranking it over you could see how you could see oil pushing up out of the bore of the number three injector and so that told me right there we have a high pressure oil leak there uh, i looked all around all the other cylinders i didn't see any oil anywhere else except for there so we pulled that injector out and we found the top two O-rings below the, the, steel, uh, the steel ring uh, were completely broken. And that was allowing the high pressure oil to push up out of the bore and, and deplete the high pressure oil system and not let it build enough high pressure oil because it didn't have enough volume. And so therefore it wouldn't start. So we replaced these O-rings and uh, let's see what that looks like after we replace the O-rings. All right, here we go. So uh, I think this is number three injector right here. So we're gonna come here, we got the copper washer, we got the lower O-ring, the upper, and that's supposed to be two O-rings that are connected. And then the metal washer is to keep the O-rings from blowing up past. So it looks like this is our culprit. So I'm gonna re-ring this uh, and put it in, crank it over, make sure I don't see any more oil pushing out of any more of the injector holes, and then put it back together and hope there's nothing else wrong. So there you go. Okay, so now we got the injector resealed. So now we should start, hopefully better than before. It's gonna take a minute to build the injector pressure. But the key is that it stays running after about 10 minutes, cause that's when it would cut off, it was about 10 minutes. There we go. All 
All right, hopefully we're going to fire on the next one. Seems to be building high pressure oil a lot faster than before. And I even emptied out the whole oil rail on the passenger side. it stays running all right so we've been running about 10 minutes now all right so now our IPR is real low which is good our injection pressure is 540 to 550 it's looking good this is about as long as it ran after I put the high pressure pump in it and then it cut off well actually I turned it off to check the oil and then it wouldn't restart so let's rev it up. All right, so hopefully, hopefully we're good. Let me let this thing run a little bit longer and we'll test drive it and see what happens. All right, here we go. Got a, just got back from a test drive, and uh, everything ran fine, drove fine, no code set on the drive. Just did a key on engine running test just now in the bay. No codes present. I'm going to pull it in, just double check the oil and transmission fluid, and we're going to call this one good. Okay, so after you replace the O-rings, this thing started up a lot faster than before, and, uh, and it ran, and it ran fine, and no more issues. So in summary, what you want to do is if you have a 1212 code or a 1211 code and you can't build 500 pounds of oil pressure, replace the IPR. Make sure that you torque the IPR properly. I showed you in the video what the torque specs are for these. Uh, that little nut is super common to fall off the IPR when it's not put on there properly and it's not torqued properly. So make sure that you torque that. And then if you have any issues beyond that, if you can't measure the high pressure pump, just pull the valve covers off and crank it over and make sure you don't have any high pressure oil leaks. Uh, you don't see any oil pushing out anywhere. Uh, and then from there, if you don't, then replace your oil pump. Uh, but if you do, remove that injector and replace it. Obviously, if you have this happen on one injector, you should pull all the injectors out and reseal all of them. So this has been my case study on my 99 uh, F, uh, F250 7.3. And uh, hopefully this helps you. Uh, along your diagnostic path. Thank you for watching the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell you get notified of all my future content, which you're definitely going to want to see. Also, check me out on Instagram, Nuts and Bolts with Tone, for my daily life as a mechanic. Show you lots of cool tools, show you tools you don't want to buy, show you lots of funny things with cars, and uh, yeah. So, also check out my merchandise store where you can get yourself a coffee cup or a t shirt to support Nuts and Bolts with Tone. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.